Okay, now we are back in business. Uh, just a second. Okay, so what we are trying to do here is, um, we want to understand how Shankara Bhashya is different from other Bhashyas first. And in each chapter, Shankaracharya comes up with some different concepts to explain Advaita very clearly, explain his Bhashya very clearly to people. And to also, um, justify and give the true meaning of Bhagavad Gita to people. So it's a very hard job and very well done by Shankaracharya. Only if, once you go very deep into the mind of Shankaracharya, you will understand what Shankaracharya is trying to do. I feel the more and more I read Shankarabhashya, I'm trying to understand why he says what he says. And it makes good sense actually to me. I'm focusing on the 13th chapter because this is where uh, Shankaracharya, Ramanujacharya, um, you know, both of them have two very different views. They establish their system of thought and they talk about a lot of um, viewpoints, how they differ. That's why I want to go deep. This body is Khetra. One who knows this is Khetra Jnya. That is the 13th chapter. First, Idam Shairam Kaunteya, Khetra Mitya Vidiyate, Etadyo Vetitam Prahuhu, Khetra Gnaiti Tatvidaha. That is the verse, the first, first verse. Lord Krishna immediately says after this verse, initially he says, This body is the field, or Khetra. And one who knows this body is Khetra Gnya. So now Krishna says, Know me. Also, as also the Kshetra Jnaya in all bodies, in everywhere, in all Kshetras, I am know me also as the Kshetra Jnaya. The knowledge of Kshetra and Kshetra Jnaya is true knowledge. Right? This is where the true knowledge is, knowing what is Kshetra Jnaya and what is Kshetra, that is true knowledge. And there is nothing else remaining to be known other than Kshetra and Kshetra Jnana. This is my view. Ishwara's, Shri Krishna's view. Shankaracharya says, Iti matam abhiprayaha, mama Ishwarasya Vishnoho. This is my view. I am the Ishwara and I am Vishnu. Shankaracharya says in the 13th chapter 2. So there is only one knowledge. Only thing to be known is Kshetra and Kshetra Jnana. That's it. Now, <clears throat> know that this Kshetrajna or Jiva is same as me. Shankaracharya says, we are only dealing with Shankarabhasya here. As there is this Kshetrajna Jiva whom you see is same as me, Parameshwara. I am the Parameshwara, but this Jiva or Kshetrajna is same as me. Asamsari. That means I am not bound. So here, this I, Aham, is Paramatma, the, or Krishna talking about, right? Krishna is Parameshwara. At the same time, he is Saguna Brahman. At the same time, he is Atman, because Atman does not communicate. Nirguna Brahman does not communicate. So the only way it communicates is through Krishna, through the Saguna Brahman. So for Shankaracharya, the, the concepts of I as a Jiva, or the uh, Saguna Brahma, Sarveshwara, Parmeshwara, and Nirguna Brahman. They're all same entities in different contexts, different meaning is given, but they refer to the same entity, Atman. 
Nirguna Brahman is also Atman. And Saguna, but is there a difference? I, I would like you to eventually, I um, will send you a list of 15 videos of uh, Bharati Tirtha Swami, who talks about Advaita, explains Advaita very well. So it's in Tamil. Some of you may not understand. But those 15 videos are very good to understand the Advaita view properly. But there are small issues where I take a little bit of uh, difference of opinion. I justify the difference of opinion. At the end of this, uh, this record, I will show you a particular video. I will send that to you separately, that video of Bharati Tirtha Swami. There, the meaning given there seem, does not seem to uh, sync very well with the Shankarabhasha of Bhagavad Gita. So that's what I want to um, mention, but it's a little bit out of context here. Let us go through the first, these shlokas. So the, how many kshetras are there? Different types of bodies. The different types of bodies are like all the way from the creator, Chaturmukha Brahma, four-faced Brahma, to a worm. Everything, any living entity, has a body. And this Kshetrajna, he is in so many different bodies. And I am, that is this Kshetrajna is devoid of any adjuncts. So the body is an adjunct. Body is a upadhi. Even our inner um, organ, Anthakarana, is a upadhi. Upadhi means adjunct. Uh, we already talked about Upadhi a long time back. Suppose Shakha Great Chandraha. Where is the moon? Behind the branches of this tree. So these branches of the tree are known as Upadhi. To refer to the moon, you're saying, oh, I'm explaining the branch of the tree, the curved branch. Look at the curved branch with only three leaves, three leaves there. Just behind there is moon, if I say that. All these are descriptions of the Upadhi. The adjuncts, so the body, mind, consciousness, India, you know, intellect, conscious, all these things are upadis. Really, thing is, what is Atman? That is not describable because that does not have any attributes. So this Atman cannot be denoted by any terms as it exists or it does not exist. Sat or asat. If I see a pot. If I see a cell phone here, oh, cell phone exists. If I don't see it here, my hands, I don't have a cell phone here. Cell phone does not exist. That means we refer to concrete entities which are pratyaksha, that is, which is right in front of our senses, as it exists or it not exists. It does not exist. But this Atman, Kshetrajna, cannot be denoted by these words because that is not an object. So the poor Shankaracharya takes some Puro Paksha. When he explains these verses, he, uh, he uh, takes a, uh, you know, somebody may say, in all the body, the Vishwara is, is the Jiva. He becomes bound like a samsari. So if Ishwara is same as Jiva, he will be in the body. And he's going through ups and downs, pleasure, pain despair, hopelessness, joblessness, whatever. That's not good. Ishwara should not have been in that kind of a bad situation, like how we are. In case he is not bound, suppose assume Ishwara is not bound. Then, if Ishwara is Jiva, then there is, there is uh, no one who is bound because uh, everybody is released. Then there is no samsara. There are two cases here, right? In the first case, in all the bodies, Ishwara is the Jiva. Then he becomes bound because he goes through ups and downs, pleasure and pain. In case, assume he is not bound, but he is the he is the Jiva in every body. And that is, he is only one Jiva. And Ishwara is only one Jiva, but he is in all these bodies. Like how Saubhari Rishi had 100 bodies or whatever, right? So like that, this Ishwara is only one, but he is the one Jiva in all the bodies. This is known as the Eka Jiva Vada. Hence, there is no samsara because Ishwara is not bound. 
and there is only one jiva, then who is bound? There is no samsara. Shankaracharya puts this to, uh, to Purva Pakshas. In this Purva Paksha case, what happens? The, because there is no samsara, there is no nobody bound, there is no need for shastras, which talk about bondage and release. There is no bandhana, there is no bondage, there is no cycle of percentage. So why do you, to whom is the shastras? Because there is nobody who need to study the shastra because there is only one jiva who is same as Ishvara and who is not bound at all. But Shankaracharya says, this is against normal experience. All this variety of so many things happening around us, the wars, people getting killed, people leaving their homes and running away to a different land, begging for money, begging for shelter. This experience is not deniable. Hence, Ishvara cannot be Jiva. This is the decision taken by the Purva Pakshi. The Purva Pakshi gives all these three different views and says, yeah, taking all this into consideration, Ishvara cannot be Jiva. Shankaracharya comes up with a 10 dozen statements from the Upanishads, from the Vedas, from Gita, Upananas, everything. Hundreds of statements says, Vidya and Avidya are different. There is something called Vidya. Ignorance is Avidya. Vidya is knowledge. Jnana, Ajnana. These are different. So we have this fundamental problem. That is why we don't understand what was said earlier. Mistaking the body as self is this beginning Avidya. Avidya is explained as mistaking. We think that this body is me. I'm not this body. But somehow, from the very beginning, we are thinking like that. Hence, due to avidya, people mistake features of non-Atman, that which is not Atman, as that which belongs to Atman. This is a fundamental mistake people do. I think that I am sitting here. I am talking to you. I am brown. I am fat. Whatever it is. This is ignorance that I am thinking. I look at the body characteristics and look at my body and say, I am that. How can that be me? That is that. Shankaracharya says, Vedas say, say the Duramete Viparite Vishuchi in Katopanishad. This Vidya and Avidya are two faraway things. Dura. They are extremely different. Ajnani na vartam jnanam tena mukshanti jantavaha. Due to ignorance, all these people are deluded. Because of delusion, what happens? Tavimam vidvan amrita iha bhavati. From the delusion, you have to get out. How do you get out? Know that person, tamemam vidvan, amrita iha bhavati. Then you will become free right here. You are immortal right here. Once you know that person. Taman pashyan hi sarvatra, tamat sthitam ishwaram, nahinasti atmana atmanam, tato yati parangatim. This is the 13th chapter, 29th shloka. He says, samam, you see everywhere, as seen, sarvatra, samavat sthitam. Everywhere, this Ishwara is in the same way. He is untouched, unperturbed. Nahinasti atmana atmanam. Once you know it, you will not hurt yourself. No, you will not kill yourself. Hinasti atmana atmanam. Tato yati parangatim. Once you get to this state, you will get to the high state of paragati. You will get spiritual upliftment you reach the spiritual goal. This is explained by Shankaracharya. By we, we, let's continue this explanation a little bit further. We think that this body is me. Who is the knower? That means I am the knower. And I think that this body is me. Body is just matter. And we know that. 
any person who goes to the cremation ground or burial ground thinks, oh, yes, the body has become one with matter. Our body is burnt away. Body is different. Again, even in an ordinary life, we see from far away, there is a short tree with bam branches. In uh, semi-darkness, you assume that there's a human being sitting, standing over there from far, because you are superimposing the characteristics of human being on the tree. We say Jiva is not happy. Jiva is happy. And but, but you don't realize that person who is sitting there in the body does not become old, nor does that person die. The body dies. The body changes its characteristics from youth, little baby, to youth, to old age, sickness, and death. Jiva is I'm sorry, I, I made a, a small mistake here. Jiva is not unhappy or happy. That means Jiva, the unhappiness and happiness belong to the matter, belong to the inner organs like mind, intelligence. But this unhappiness and happiness does not refer to Jiva. Similarly, Jiva does not die. Jiva does not become old. That we need to remember. This body-mind complex and all its activities, like whatever activities we do, eating, walking, singing, sleeping, whatever activities we do, we superimpose the activities of this body-mind intellect complex onto this jiva. That jiva is same as Ishvara, who is untouched, aloof, unaffected, untainted, by any of these bodily activities and feelings also, icha, dvesham, like, dislike, these are feelings of the mind that doesn't affect Atman within. Who is Ishwara? Who is Jiva? So body attributes are short, tall, sick, diseased, old, young, etc. Does not even touch this Atman within. But due to avidya, people say that, oh, he became sick. He was young, but he's old now. All these things, we ascribe body features to this Atman. Objection. One guy raises objection, but this in the Shankar Basha, he talks about it. This is not fair. In the case of a short tree appearing as a human being with arms, it is possible because both the tree and human being are objects which can be known. There are two, uh, two objects. I see a man here, he's walking around. After some time, I see something like a man, but it is tree with arms. But both are objects. And I am the independent other person who is the observer. And this observer is seeing two things. They look similar. The tree and the man looks very similar. And that too, lighting is a little bit low. I mistake one to the other. If that happens, why does it happen? Both are objects. But in this case, the body bearer of the body, that is, in case of body, the bearer of the body is Deha and Dehi. Body is there, and I is the Dehi. Atman is subject, and the body is object. That means, I am the subject, I am the knower, and this body is an object. I can say, oh, my hand, my fingers here, like this. So how can I mistake me who is an over to the body? Because in the old case, there were two, two objects. No, there's only one object, which is the body, and an I, which is not an object, which is me, subject. So how can the subject and object be superimposed? This is not fair. You are, and Shankaracharya takes this as a pura paksha. Now he defines what avidya is. The ignorance is not a feature or a characteristic of the atma within, or the, who is an over, or this 
Ishvara. Avidya is something which is sitting in the mind. So it is a karana dharma. Karana means an instrument. Like I is, I is an instrument, right? I'm looking at it. If uh, I get, um, you know, this, um, this, uh, the, uh, the um, hmm, I'm forgetting the, uh, the, the problem with the eyes. You get, uh, you get, you get operated after you get, become old or something. There, there's some, you know, sometimes the, the vis the aperture gets closed by a, by growth. Cataract. Cataract. So because of cataract, the eyesight is impaired. And uh, I am okay, I'm perfectly normal, but my eyes are not working. So what they do, they remove the cataract, they remove that, um, uh, the, the, the screen which is, uh, which is uh, obstructing my view. Once that is removed, I can see. So the problem was with the eye, not with me. So the ignorance is a problem of mind problem of intellect and mind and all those things, or like the instrument which are like ice. And the ice problem can be corrected. So if Ajnana is, is there, like how the eye cataract is removed, and if Ajnana is there in your mind, by doing Dhyana, by doing a lot of uh, good things, you can slowly remove your Ajnana. Then Atma Jnana comes, but Atma is untouched by this whole process of Get, you know, being in ignorance and working hard and doing all the tapas and all the good good things you can do in your life and then getting your uh, ajnana burnt and all this this uh, uh, activities you do to purify yourself that is all activity which occurs in your mind, body, intellect and this atman is untouched. Avidya is, if avidya is the swadharma of atma, that is ignorance, is the feature of atman itself, the self, what happens? That will be like the heat, how heat is related to fire. The fire and heat cannot be separated out. So your avidya or ignorance cannot be separated from jivatma from you or self. You cannot separate avidya at all because it becomes the nature of Atman. Hence, avidya can never be the nature of jivatma or atma. Atman is nirvikari, who does not connect to anything, who does not even connect to any, any, anyone else. And that is jiva and is ishvara. That is nirvikari, that is same as Atman. There's only one Atman. Shankaracharya refers to 1332. Anaditvati nalipyate. This Atman is Anadi. Shankaracharya defines Anadi here as Adi, Asya Nasti. Adi is Karana, which does not have any cause which causes it. So this Atman is causeless. It is not caused. Nirguna. There, there is no attribute. Paramatma. This is Paramatma only. That is Parabrahman. I am Avyayaha. It is unchanging. Does not change. Sharira stopikante. In this body, so many changes are happening. Diseases, pain, everything is happening. But this Paramatma is untouched. Nakaroti nalipyate. It does not act. So there is no action to this Atman within. Nalipyate does not get tainted. But who is acting? Who is getting tainted? Who is in trouble? Who is upset? That we will see. This is Adhyasa, mutual superimposition. What do we have in this body? Brain, blood, lymph, heart, arteries, muscles, bones, spleen, all these different organs come together and the whole thing is known as body. And this I is a different thing. Aham Sukhi, 
I am happy. And you, it's all because you know this 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 object suddenly become I. I am this object. I am happy. I am sad. So the, the what we do is the antakarna dharma. Antakarna is the inner mind. The mind is happy. Our mind is upset. But we think that 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 refers to me. I. Aham stolaha. Aham krishaha. I am weak or fat. You say the body is weak or fat, but you say you are. <coughs> so old age, death is also a script to tell self. Oh, I am old now. Somebody died. All these things are ascribed to the self. How is the body attribute of, of, um, ascribed to the self? That is possible. That's possible. Now, but who is the knower feeler within us? That's a difficult question. I am, I feel I am the knower. I feel I am the experiencer. If I am that, that who is this I really? I experience problems. I'm upset. But who is this I? So in the sense, what we do is, there is this Brahman. Really speaking, that is everywhere. It is within, within everything. But this, there is this body. And in this body, we have something separated out as mind, intellect, senses, and we call it antakarna. So initially, the I is ascribed to this. See, initially, we even ascribe the I to the body. You say that, don't touch me. Don't even look at me. No, you say that. That is purely because I connect it, I refer it to, to my body itself in that sense. But when we say, oh, I'm happy, I'm, so, I'm very happy now, oh, I'm sorry, I'm very upset, all these things are in the antakarana dharma. So then you associate I with the antakarana. But I is this jivatman. But jivatman is associated with this body, mind, intellect. So then what is this truly this I? One should dig deeper, I is only Brahman, nothing else. But who is the feeler then? What is, what is the one which is feeling? If I is Brahman, he is disconnected, he is not bound at all, but I seem to be bound. What is this problem here? So really speaking, Shankaracharya says, just like how old age death are not features of Atman, similarly, no worship, Nyatritva, experiencership, Bhoktritva, doership, Kartritva, are all wrongly ascribed to the Atman, who is same as Brahman. So, Jivatma is not a Karta, according to Shankaracharya. Jivasma is not a Jnata. Jivatma is not a, a Bhokta. He doesn't experience anything. Because ignorance, how do we ascribe this? What is this ignorance? How do we ascribe this? We feel that we are upset and we, uh, we feel pain and pleasure. And we, we think that I am the doer. He says that is a superimposition. Really speaking, that is not true. Atman is untouched. He is not the knower. He is not the enjoyer. He is not the doer of any activity. Like how a kid says that, oh, look at the sky. The sky is dirty or dusty or sky is blue. Sky is untouched, has nothing to do with the dirt or dust or even blueness. Even blueness, why does blueness occur in sky? Because scattering of light by the atmospheric gases, the gases are in there in, in, in space. Atmosphere is just around our earth, right? For a few miles or maybe a mile or two, whatever, there are gases and these gases reflect and scatter light coming there. And they seem to scatter uh, light with a low frequency or something like that, that. That is actually blue in color. So we see that as blue. But really speaking, the space or sky is not blue. So some of the characteristic of something else is assumed to be the characteristic of something else. This mistake we do, that is superimposition. Similarly, we ascribe the Khetra Dharmas to Khetra Jnana. 
the knower, thinker, experiencer, killer, actor. We say that Kshetrajna does all these things. They are all Kshetra Dharma. They belong to the body. Brahman is in all the Kshetras and is untouched by the field attributes or the Kshetra Dharmas. Well, man, you're talking too much. That's what somebody would say. Why don't you tell me? Why don't, why don't I ask you a tough question? What is that? To whom is this illusion? You always talk about delusion, Shankaracharya. But the really speaking, I don't know who, who has this illusion. On one end, this Jiva is same as Ishvara, Ishvara is same as Brahman, and that person doesn't have any illusion. illusion. But there is somebody stuck, and his mind or intellect or body, they are all uh, not, they are not consciousness. They are all matter. Mind is matter. Intellect is matter. It is something related to matter. Body is matter. In my body, I don't see anything else. So to whom is this illusion? Somebody has got this illusion, right? This is what you're not telling me. Shankaracharya, why don't you clearly tell us? Then he asked one question. Shankaracharya asked you, but who do you think has this illusion? Look, my friends have illusion. I'm not talking about your friend. To whom do you think is this illusion? Shankaracharya asked. I think I'm deluded. I see all this world and everything like that. I see I'm upset and all those things. If you're deluded, if you see this illusion, then you are you have the you, uh, you are caught in this illusion. So to you, to you, this illusion becomes. Do I know myself? I don't know myself very well. Well, you know good enough. Since you are, you are a very young person, you always know, you refer to yourself and I did this, I did, I did that. You, you say so many things. You seem to know yourself. That is the person who is caught in the illusion. If you are free from bondage and if you didn't see this universe, you would never ask this question. So obviously you know who is bound. So the process of being in bondage, getting out of bondage, etc., all occur in the avidya or illusion. So the illusion creates the knowers, the known, the act of knowing. All these things are happening in the illusory world. If, if you say, I am stuck, then you are the person who is in, inside the illusion. Because Atman is not, Brahman is not, Ishvara is not, they are all one and the same. So Vidya is a process for you to get out of this illusion. You know you are stuck, you have this problem, you think that you are getting old, your body is pro has problems and what if I die kind of a fear is there. You know you are in trouble. You are in the cycle of birth and death. That means you are in illusion, you have to get out. But even the process of getting out is in illusion. This is avidya everywhere. How do you get out? Purify your mind. So even bondage and getting out of bondage, vidya, avidya are all inside illusion. What is not in illusion? Atman. Atman does, is not involved in any of this. If there is anything, if you think about this universe and say if somebody is feeling something, somebody knows something, somebody is thinking about something, somebody is experiencing something, or is acting, running, sleeping, doing any activity, everything is an illusion. This Nirguna Brahman, who is the same as Saguna Brahman, who is the same as the Jiva, is free from all this illusion. So we talked about avidya, vidya, they're all in there. Avidya means non-discrimination. Vidya means discrimination. That's all. Both are in the illusion. So a person with discrimination will avoid a snake, 
or a sharp tip of the darbha grass that it will not come, you know, it should not come and hurt your eyes. So when he goes to pick up darbha grass, he is very af afraid of the sharp tips of the darbha grass. Or a well, when he is going to find darbha grass in a forest, there may be a well dug and he doesn't see and the well is covered with grass or something, he will fall into the well. So he has to recognize that there is a well. So a person with discrimination will avoid snake if, if the snake is moving around in, in the bushes. They avoid the sharp tip of the grass or a well. Some people, due to lack of discrimination, because if they don't cannot discriminate, they get severely hurt because they may step on a snake and the snake bites the person. Or without knowing more around, the darbagras uh, pierces into the eyes. Eyes are gone. Or fall into a well, a well because he didn't see the uh, hidden well. Look at the power of discrimination. That's what Shankaracharya says. This is an actual sentence of Moksha Dharma, a classic called Moksha Dharma. So discrimination and non-discrimination are very important. And there is a huge difference between discrimination and non-discrimination. The huge difference between Vidya and Avidya. That we need to know. But Vidya and Avidya are happening in illusion. The discrimination and non-discrimination are in illusion. Why is that? Avidya is Karana Dharma, not Kshetrajna Dharma. Avidya belongs to the mind, complex, not to Atman. Even the Dhyana, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, all these things, they can clean the Antakarana and help in realization. But really speaking, that is happening in Avidya, that's happening in ignorance. So this ignorance is like a massive thing. Don't assume ignorance is so negative. Ignorance has got this huge universe inside it. So jnanat moksha means this, this jnana is inside the ignorance and that will lead you to the jnana outside ignorance, which is moksha. So the process of getting out of this is also jnana, but that which is within the antakarana. And that will lead you to moksha, which is jnana swarupa, which is atman, which is different from what was in this illusion. Moksha itself is illusory. Ah, uh, yes. You already were free. You thought you were bound. And then you realize you're, you're free, you were always free. So the way moksha itself is illusory. Bandha is also illusory. Bondage is illusory. So what is this maya, illusion, mithya, andrata, avidya, vyabharika, satya, convention, reality? Anywhere you say, I, I, I did this, I did that, I did well in exams, I defeated my enemy, I'm the doer. Or I, I'm thinking about um, astronomy now. You do that. Knowing. I know Vedanta very well. I'm an expert if I think like that. Feeling that I'm happy or sad and I'm really not in a good mood. Experiencing, oh, it's very hot here, very cold here, soft and hard. All these experiences. I'm doing karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga. All these things. I'm ignorant. I'm not knowledgeable. These are different states of our mind. This all exists because there is a difference between the knower, known, and knowledge. Everything, acting, thinking, knowing, feeling, experiencing, everything happens because, because there is a knower, known, and knowledge. Three different things, three putti. This difference between all these things can be destroyed by jnana, then you will have only one jnana. And what this jnana is a process here. And even that, which can be a vidya, that vidya will get you out of this avidya. That is like the fire burning up the forest and extinguishing itself. So this jnana will get you, vidya will get you out of this mess 
and it will go away. So, but the absolute truth is a separate thing. That is Nirupadika Satya, Nirguna Brahman. There is no action, there is no thinking, there is no doing. It is an inexplicable state unknown. We cannot talk about it. And in there, there is no separation between no, knower, no knowledge. In fact, they don't exist. Swatmana Pinajan Adi Shankaracharya says he doesn't know himself. Atman does not know himself. Very important. This is a big difference between Vishtadvaita and Advaita here. Atman can know yourself, but in Vishisht, in Advaita, that Atman cannot know itself. If Jiva is Brahman, Shastras are waste. Shastras make sense only when in the state of Ajnana, not in Moksha. So that's a good attack on Advaita, right? Shastras don't make sense. But Shankaracharya says, Shastras are not useless because Shastras make sense only in the state of Ajnana. In, in the state of Ajnana, you need Shastras to get out of Ajnana. In Moksha, nobody needs Shastras in Moksha. So this problem is common to all uh, philosophers, including Advaitins and Dvaitins. For Advaita, even Shastras are illusory to start with. Somebody can attack Advaita saying that Shastras are illusory to start with. But Advaitins come back without answering the question. Advaita says, what, what are you talking about? Advaitins is full of problems. Dvaita is not a simple, you know, perfect theory. I'll tell you what is the problem with Dvaita. Okay, let's see. In, in Dvaita, Atman have to have phases, right? Atman has to go through bound state, Bhagdavasta, and then it has to get moksha and get released. So release state is there. So if initially bound state is there, when was this bondage? Or you say anadi bondage. That means beginningless bondage. If there's beginning less, then it has to be, uh, it has to have no end. Anything which is, which is beginning less should not have any end. And if you say that, the bondage will become eternal. If bondage is eternal, anadi is ananta. Ananta means endless. If there's no end means bondage will never go away. This is the rule. Shankaracharya says, Anything which, is, uh, which has no beginning will have no end. So if you assume bondage has no beginning, it will have no end. You will be bound eternally. You want it? Shankaracharya uh, changes the meaning a little bit here with anadi. Anadi means without a cause. So even if you take that as without a cause, this bondage does it have a cause? It doesn't have a cause. If it doesn't have a cause, it can, it can never go away. It has to be there forever. However, okay, I'll talk, to, talk about it later. Now Shankaracharya is attacking the Dvaitins, right? He says, if phases like bondage and release are accepted to Jivatma, that is Jivatma gets bound, Jivatma gets released, then eternality cannot be justified of Jivatma. Jivatma cannot be eternal. Why? Jivatma goes through changes. Jivatma goes through bondage and Jivatma goes through um, uh, release. So Jivatma itself goes through change. Anything that changes is not eternal. Now comes another question is uh, how does this bondage occur? The bondage phase occurred due to a reason. Or did it occur because the bondage is the nature of Jivatma? If bondage is the very nature of Jivatma, there is no moksha. Because that is the essence of Jivatma. Jivatma has to be bound. Jivatma always gets into trouble. That's the nature of Jivatma. So if you cannot say it's the nature of Jivatma. If you say, it is due to a reason, some kind of a reason, nimitta. Because of that, bondage occurs. And if the reason goes away, the bondage goes away. If you say that, then that reason, which comes and goes, 
happens and does not happen has to be unreal because anything real has no change in it. Then bondage has to be unreal. If bondage has to be unreal, you are coming into my town. Dvaitins have to accept Advaita. So anything that comes and goes is unreal. Bondage is unreal. If bondage is unreal, oh, welcome to town. Dvaitins, you are talking like me. We are Advaitins. We believe in the unreal bondage. You also seem to believe, but you don't want to talk about it. Shastra anarthya ke dosha is common to Dvaitins and Advaitins. That is, there is no use of Shastras because Shastra is Mithya. That will fall together because in the state of Moksha, there is no need of Shastra. But in the state of bondage, you need Shastra. Even you need Shastra, we need Shastra too. So there is no problem. In the bound phase, in Advaita, bound phase is unreal. There you need Shastra. But once you get the reality, no one needs Shastra in Moksha. Okay. Another important thing to understand about what is Khetra and what is Khetra Jnana, right? Who is Khetra Jnana? Who is Khetra? We need to understand. All this happiness, upset, sickness, all these feelings, fear, what will happen to my dear ones? Why am I unable to take the stress of life? All these things are Khetra Dharma. Khetra means that which is known, that is body, that belongs to this body, mind, intellect complex. Note, these are Gnaya Dharmas, we can know about it. They do not belong to you or the I. They, they do not belong to Khetragnya. So Khetragnya is not tainted by any of these feelings. He's uninvolved. Again comes the problem. Who is the person who is bound in this samsara? I don't know who I am, right? Because I cannot see myself. But I know I'm stuck in this uh, world. That we know. But Nyatra or the knower cannot know himself, but only objects. But since you know this object called I, the I is a seem to be, oh, I am stuck, I am in upset. upset. This is an object because you're knowing, you're knowing the right. That cannot be the subject which is Nyatra because Nyatra cannot know other objects. And objects are not him. If anything gets known, that, has to, that cannot be Nyatra. If you know yourself, as upset or, or hurt or whatever it is, that means that is not the Jnatra. That's already known to you. So Jnatra is untouched by all these processes of knowing, known, and things like that. That's how you understand. So who is this person who is bound? That's something, an imaginary person in your mind, that you, whom you call it as I. So even if Jnatra knows this world of sorrows. Then the Jnatra somehow is, uh, is connected to sorrows, right? That's a problem, right? Yes, that's a problem. One second. The, Shankaracharya explains this further. Say, we say fire burns. Fire doesn't act actually. Fire doesn't buy it. Well, it doesn't really burn by doing a burning action. No, why? That is the nature of fire to be hot. And that heat gets transferred and other objects uh, burn. But fire is not actually acting to burn. Similarly, we just say as a convention that fire burns because fire doesn't act. There is no real action of burning that can be ascribed to fire. The nature of the fire is to be hot. Similarly, Jnatratva is Aupacharika. It should be easier. Jnatratva is Aupacharika. Jnatratva, no worship is ascribed to self as I know and all those things. 
really speaking, Jnatritva doesn't belong to the Atman. So Atman is not an over. Kshetra Jnaya is a Jnatra. So he is a Jnata, but he doesn't know anything. So who is a Jiva? It's just a phantom entity in the Antakkarana. Antakkarana avichinna chaitanya. It is chetana, some kind of a chetana, but it is a phantom. It is not real entity. Due to avidya, the knower and the known is imagined. Even the knower is imagined. Known is imagined. Who, imagine, who imagines? The person who is the knower is imagining. Killer and the killed is imagined. Doer and the action is imagined. So this all is universal, is kalpita. The ups and downs, all these processes in this universe is kalpita, is imagined. Shankaracharya, in the 18th chapter, brings in some more clarity to this whole thing. We need to understand this, very important. Which is uh, 18.11. In this, Shankaracharya goes further. Siddhim prapto yatha brahma tatapnopti nipodami samasena eva kaunteya nishta jnana siya Even in the 1850, Shankaracharya explains things in a deeper way. We'll only take some concepts here. Brahman is formless. How is it seen or understood if it is formless? One question comes up, right? Some say, Brahman is Bharupaha Adityavarnam Tamasaparastat. This Adityavarna is there. Bharupa is there. Shankaracharya says this, this all this brightness, uh, Aditya, like sun and all those things, they're only saying that they are not tamasic. It is not dark, that's all. It is not exactly Bharupa Adityavarna. You cannot say that. It is not positive uh, characteristic. But one thing you can say, it is other than tamas or other than darkness. So, what is this process of moksha? These names and forms are imaginary. This name, form, they're all imaginary. We should remove all the imaginary name forms. Anything with name and form is not Atman, because Atman does not have a name, does not have form. So, once you deny all this Nama Rupa, deny anything which name and form, then this external world will be dissolved and Atman appears by itself. Because Atman is Sarva Prasiddha, everywhere it is there. Though formless, with, without having a form, it is always there. So you cannot miss Atman. In all cognitions, in all knowing, in all activities, everything we see, perceive, Atman is the one behind it. That Atman is in every of these activities. So, consciousness or I, what is this consciousness or I? See, like how a heated iron rod appears red and is full of agni, fire. So is this consciousness, chetana, this consciousness or chetana is in, the, in this antakarana. Mind, buddhi, ahankara seem to be lighted by this consciousness. This, but this chetana is kshetra. Whom we know as I, that is the consciousness, we think that I am bound, I am thinking, I am doing all those things. This I is still the body. Chetana is Kshetra, since it is the known. Because the moment I know myself as, oh, I am this guy, I live here, I do this, I do this for a living, then it becomes a known. Once it is known, it is a body, it is Kshetra, not the real consciousness or not the real Jnata, not the uh, so this, the I, what we understand is still a gnaya or that which is known, which is a body, which is a field. So this I is known as chidabhasa. Chit is chaitanya consciousness. Abhasa means it shows, it shows. It is present in all our body, entire body when we are awake. There's some kind of consciousness in all this thing. That is still material. That is all. Chetana 
but still object. That is not the subject which is inside. So the I in Advaita is anatma. The moment I say I, that's not atma. This is known as ahamarta anatma vada. This is exactly opposite to Vishishta Advaita. In Vishishta Advaita, Ahamartha Atma Vada. The I is really Atman, the Jivatma. In Vishishta Advaita. In Advaita, I is a phantom consciousness sitting here in this body which will all go away. That is just body. In a way, it's just body consciousness and body related. And I as real true Brahman, Atman is separate. This is the end of the slideshow. I, I wanted to do more. I just wanted to give you this much information today. It's already almost close to an hour. So it's a good time to break, stop sharing, and ask you if I put all of you to sleep today. Did I? Anybody awake? Yeah, we are away. <laughs> we are away. Okay. Okay. Tell me. So it was a very what? difficult to understand today. A bit too difficult. So I must hear again. Go through the whole lesson. You should go again. through the lecture again. Think a lot. The, because the 13th chapter deals with a complex. Uh, by the way, was this class said earlier? Did we deal with all these things earlier? Maybe some portion of it, but not all, right? Yes. Yeah. Some new yeah. things were there. Yes. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. See, after listening to this lecture, uh, if everything, the jiva is in the domain of uh, Agnana, Ishwara himself is in the domain of Agnana, and if Brahman is totally separate, currently, when I am talking, when you are listening, when all are hearing, what is the reality here then? Is there any relatively reality real. here? Relatively real. real. To you, this is real. To you, I am there. To me, you are there. We are all relatively real. And there is obviously I am stuck here, you are stuck here. So we both are, we both are not the Ishwaras. So this then, then who is talking and who is hearing? I am a mental consciousness. This Antakarna Vachina Chaitanya, the Chaitanya which is sitting in this mind-body complex. And you are the Chaitanya which is sitting in your mind-body complex. You are communicating with other. But Atman is the one which is untouched. And that is Brahman, that is Ishvara. And that is what is making everything happen. Because of Atman, everything is happening. But Atman is not involved. That's why he says, Upadrashta, Anumanta, Bharta, Bhukta, Meheshwaraha, Paramatmeti, Chapjukta, Dehe, Smim, Purusha, Paraha. That he Shankaracharya takes it in a different way. So Shankaracharya uses a different idea of the two, two entity. Drashta Drik. Then there's a ba basic question here. A basic question will come here. If yeah. Brahman is totally separate, if Brahman is totally different, totally separate from Jiva, Ishvara, and the world, then how is it known then? In the first place, how Brahman. is it known? Because if it's really separated. Brahman is not known. Brahman is not is known only because all these things are acting. You, me are talking because of Brahman. So Brahman is known only by denying the external world. See, this is a very wonderful, beautiful ideology of Shankaracharya. Because, see, in, in yoga, what do you do? You take your mind away from the external matter. External activities, you take your mind away from all the ups and downs and you focus and go away. Then what happens? Mind turns inwards outside the world. The world is not important for it. Mind goes inward. It finds Brahman. But what it is, the mind gets dissolved on the way to on the way to find Brahman. Just like how Ramakrishna Paramahamsa says, the salt doll, when you throw it in the ocean. And if the salt doll wants to know the depth of the ocean, the salt doll goes and tries to find the depth of the ocean, but salt doll gets dissolved in this process. Like that, if you want to know Brahman, your consciousness, your, your mind, intellect, body, everything gets dissolved. And all you see is one Brahman. 
you don't see that at that time you are that very difficult thing uh, krishna because uh, see currently i know as you told i know we, i am happy such terms we are using right? yes yes so but when you when when you say that we finally dissolve like right, that then yes. we won't know it. then we won't the, know anything because the no over the known it, everything is taken out so what remains is brahman brahman is don't know. that is why brahman was never bound brahman atma is only uh, 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 vertical never bound never never there is no release no moksha for brahman brahman is always there he is free but we are wrongly ascribing in no over you know i am no over i am the, i was born here these are wrongly ascribed wrong everything is wrong we are talking who is thinking no no who is ascribing then oh this me. maya this maya is very powerful maya is making this and i is sitting here an eye is get stuck so the maya is creating both the eye and the objects so sab jnata jnatra all these different people what we think as jnatas and jnatras ajnayas all the objects the universe and the multiple people around all these things are created by maya maya doesn't exist maya exists only because we think that it exists because from our side maya exists from brahman side there is nothing maya doesn't exist so when shankara okay. said yes so that question the propaction for whom this illusion is there he says if you are having it then you have it one who does not exactly. have it does not have it he says that is a wasteful that is a wasted question that question does not cannot be answered and it is a useless question the question itself is wrong according to shankara if you are the question itself assumes ignorance and the moment you assume ignorance brahman is never known so you, that question becomes useless to whom is this ignorance if you ask oh you are stuck that means you have that ignorance that means that that you is not the real i the real atma the real ishvara you are not that if you are that ishvara does not ask this question krishna does not ask question because krishna is not bound brahman is not bound so you are bound so you are asking so that bound individual is also is inside the maya the bondage is maya you are also in the maya when you ask you will never get out of it you have to find a way out to find a way out you have to go through process of vidya so you have to attain atma jnana different atma jnana levels you have to attain and that uh, even the process of attaining atma jnana is the ignorance so within ignorance there is good ignorance bad ignorance the good ignorance gets you out of ignorance bad ignorance puts you deeper into ignorance so both are in the field of ignorance in the antakaram so this whole thing is in your mind this universe is because your mind thinks that the universe is there universe is there so mind makes the universe exist including all the actors in it so finally we will go to a state where we will be what what do you say finally in in this in this in this view we finally go to a state where there is nothing we, we won't know anything then you won't know anything but that is pure shanta shiva but that is blissful according to bliss also you from where we say it's bliss from there you cannot say it's just like saying how does the waking state be if i am in the dream state if i want to explain the wake state what happened i cannot explain how the wake state is so that state is not explicable from this dream state or this ignorance state i cannot explain that so there's no point in explaining and because all our explanations are going to be wrong we are in a dream we can't explain the wake state from the dream state have i fully become an advaitya is <laughs> reji have i become advaiti fully or something is remaining only my tiruman is remaining i am fully advaiti right i want to ask you oh, how Krishna. is your mind my mind everybody else's mind sees the same illusion i mean it sees the, the same, same illusion it is in the same illusion yes 
all of us see the same illusion, all the minds. Yeah, all the minds are in the same illusion. Wherever there is variety, wherever there is any difference and all, that's all in illusion. Because within Brahman, there is no variety, no nothing. Okay, I'm trying Namaste. to understand this relative reality. Um, could we say that Brahman, you know, created a fantastic movie and this movie is the universe. So all the characters in the movie are relatively real. So everything is really an, uh, an illusion. Yes. But they're all like characters in a movie. Sure, exactly. Yes. And it's That's only... True. And it's only Brahman who can remove this ignorance. Yes. So he chooses thought, some character in the movie and removes the ignorance of that particular character. He, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and he gives you Shastra. Karunya Shastra Pandina. So he gives you Shastra and this, some character likes the Shastra and starts studying Shastra and start becoming serious in it. And then he starts acting and um, you know preparing, meditating, the Nidityasana and everything like that. That person gets out of the movie because he thinks that he doesn't exist after that point. Nothing exists and he gets out. He's not there. Okay. So we are all characters in a movie. Shakespeare said that the world is a stage. We are all actors. I had a follow-up question to Hemaji's question. Uh, if, uh, if that is true, then uh, in that case, actually Brahma, uh, sorry, Brahman doesn't uh, either create nor destroy. As per Advaita, Brahman doesn't sure. do anything. Sure. So okay. the thing is, this creation, everything is only Maya. And the Maya is also a primal, uh, what do you call Maya exists, Maya is undeterminable in Advaita, right? Maya exists only for us. If we, you know, if our people are bound, we think Maya exists. Yeah. But from Brahman, Maya does not exist at all. Yeah. So this creation is just an illusion. There's no creation, there's no dissolution, there's no bondage, there is no mosha. Everything is illusion. And that we call as maya from our perspective. From, from Brahman perspective, maya doesn't exist either. Even avatars are illusionary. Yeah, all of them are illusionary. Avatars, Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, Brahma Sutras, Vedas, all are illusionary. Nothing I have is one real. More so, uh, uh, sir, uh, that actually what Shankaracharya wants us to see as he wants to take us to the absolute reality level. That is what is his final teaching, yeah. no, sir. That's He's true. saying yeah. reality, re re relative reality, you, what you see doesn't exist. So, go to the absolute reality. That is the ultimate, he says. Sure. Sure. Huh? Sure. Uh, another yeah. thing, I do not understand why the Advaitans don't accept Shastras. You see, what, in which area they accept Shastras? Which one? I don't understand. What is your question? Uh, you said that Advaitans don't accept Shastras, no, sir. That is from which level they don't accept Shastras? No, no. Advaitam uh, accepts Shastras in the bonds, bondage, bond stage. But once uh, who goes to Moksha, there is no need for Shastras. Shastras are unreal. Oh. Yes. Shastras are unreal, and but they're relatively real. So here, because I am a relative person, I have to use Shastra. That, aff uh, that, uh, that affects me, but not the one who is released. Thank you, sir. I had one more query. Actually, two queries. Uh, one being whether there is a difference between uh, Jiva and uh, Sakshi, the witness. And if there is a difference, in that case, whether Sakshi is also affected by uh, this Maya, that is Avarna and Vikshepa. Hey. See, in, in Advaita, the concept of Shakshi is in the universal level. Okay. Jiva is at an individual level. Okay. So, in, 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 uh, the, in, in a way, what is, uh, this Jiva basically becomes this universal Shakshi. And even that universal Shakshi goes away because there is no seeing in Brahman. The Shakshi is assumed only to the level of, to the level of Saguna Brahman kind of a thing. Right. Because Sakshi is, in, it's only uh, because Sakshi is basically say it's Brahman and he does not act, but he just watches. But that watching is not necessary after some point. We use, so the Sakshi is just a concept used till one gets perfect Brahma Bhava. 
Okay. Once there is perfect Brahma Bhava, Brahman cannot even be said as Sakshi. Because what is there to see? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So this, all these things I'm doing is to understand, all of you should understand the view of Shankaracharya very clearly. That's all. And eventually we will understand how Bhakti fits in and everything falls into this master plan of Shankaracharya. That's all. Okay. Namaskar. We will. Yeah. Namaskar. Uh -huh. Swami, you said about some video uh, last minute you will share. 15 videos at the oh, beginning of the class. That, that I will send you uh, in the Bhagavad Gita list. I'll send you. Subscribe to that. It is the Shringeri Sharada Petam videos. 15 of them are there. In one of the videos, Acharya says, So, Surupan, Sanusandanam, Dam Bhakti Ingrara, Ange, Adatla. I do not uh, I don't understand, I don't agree with it perfectly because Shankaracharya's explanation of bhakti in uh, in uh, she in the Bhagavad Gita Bhashyas seem to be different. I will also send you the paper by SS Ragvacha, Bhakti, uh, the place of bhakti in Shankara Bhashya. The, the book is there. That that small uh, PDF. I'll send that to you also because you will see that Anusandhanam alone doesn't seem to be bhakti, even though Shankaracharya says it in a different Viveka Chodamani, he says Anusandhanam is bhakti. But what does that Anusandhanam involve? There in the Bhagavad Gita Varsha, he talks about bhakti just like how Ramanujacharya or some other Dvaitin talks. That's what I wanted to let, let you know, that Swamiji did not explain that in a complete way. Or maybe he explained it in different videos. I would like you to give the whole set of videos to you and you figure it out. Okay? Sir, uh, that Swamiji the video Tamil or Kannada? Tamil. 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 Oh, okay. Simple Tamil. Uh, Kannadikas will sort of understand. A little bit they will understand. But... Uh, uh, yeah, you know, they can listen mostly that very simple Tamil because that Swamiji, I don't think he's from Tamil Nadu, but he talks very Kannadiga oriented Tamil or something. Swamiji is from Andhra, sir. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Bharti Tirtha Swami is from Andhra. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Very good. All right. Namaskaram. Asmat Guru Pyar Maha. Namaskaram. Asmat Parama Guru Pyar Maha. Asmat Sarva Guru Pyar Maha. Shri Krishna Parama Brahmane Maha. Shri Rakshmi Nasimha Parama Brahmane Maha. Shri Lakshmi Hayavadana Prabhupada Mahasarvam Shri Krishna Pramasa.